what seems to me the most con- convincing view of what night is Laylatul Qadr is that it's one, any one of these last 10 nights. That's the most compelling argument. And our attitude towards Laylatul Qadr should be almost like it moves every year. Don't think it's one of these nights. It, it's, it's, you know, it's a moving target. So you're, you're constantly seeking it. But yet again, I, I remind myself and I remind you that this is a very important quest. Uh, seeking that night and taking advantage of that night is such a big deal that Allah actually dedicated an entire surah, not just an ayah or two ayat, an entire surah of the Qur'an just to this. And if that wasn't enough, in, in the opening of Surah Al-Dukhan, He did it again. In Surah number 44, He actually did it again. He dedicated the first passage only to this night and what this night implies and what its important it, importance is. So it's not a small thing. It's, you know, there are other nights or days in Islam that have value. Right, but uh, and like you know the the Hajj, its sacred days are there. Of course, the entire month of Ramadan has sacred value. But there's no not any one of those times in the year or the calendar that has been specified by an entire surah just by itself. That's never happened. The only other thing I can think of is a surah dedicated by a time, and that's the Jumu'ah prayer, Surah Al Jumu'ah. Right, and even that, the entire surah is not dedicated to Jumu'ah. It's the last couple of ayat, nine, ten, and eleven. Those are dedicated to the Friday prayer. The rest of the surah is about something else. It leads up to the Friday prayer. Right, so this is unique, and this is something that we really should be taking into consideration. This is a night in which Allah sends decisions, major decisions, for the rest of the year, and all the good decisions. Okay, all the good decisions for the rest of the year are sent. Who's going to earn what? Who's going to enjoy what happiness? What child is going to be born? What marriage is going to take place? What good and what bad? And who's going to come to Islam? And who's going to you know, die a peaceful death? Whatever it may be, all of those decisions are actually, they're already known by Allah, but the angels come to start executing those decisions in this night. This is the night, you know how you have like in governments, you have like the budget and then the execution of the budget. This is like, this is that day. This is that day where the heavens and the decree that is made by Allah is sent down and the decisions are now starting to get executed by the angels. And that's one of the ways to understand Laylatul Qadr. The second meaning of Qadr is actually manzila uh, or, or sharaf, uh, nobility, honor. This is the night of great honor. Why? And you can think of it like this. The most honorable of the angels, Jibreel, came in this night. And he came with the most honorable book of Allah, the Qur'an. And he gave it to the most honorable messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right, and the most honored of nights. So it's a combination of all these honors and glory, you know, uh, glories that come together in Laylatul Qadr. Right, so it's actually almost like the first ayah, in anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr, is almost describing one of the things that makes this night so noble and so honorable. So, so far I've given you decree and I've given you honor. Uh, another meaning of Qadr or Qudra is actually power. Uh, it's power. And so this is a night in which we should have complete faith in the power of Allah to change things to change our, our fate, to change our behavior, to change, to give us, you know, to empower us to do things because Allah has endowed this night with unusual strength and unusual power. And it's an, a manifestation of Allah's miracles in this night. After all, the greatest miracle ever given to humanity, the Qur'an was given in this night, the most powerful word of Allah. So then we should have more belief in miraculous answerings of du'as in this night than any other night. Now, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ what could give you any clue what the night of power, the night of decree, the night of calculation, uh, what, what could it be? What could, what could give you any clue? This is Allah's way of saying, I'm about to tell you the main things you need to know about Laylatul Qadr. The, the, the core concepts that you need to internalize for you to value this night and not lose sight of, you know, so you never become you know, someone who doesn't take advantage of it. So now the first value of the night, Laylatul Qadri khayrun bin alfi shahr. The night of power or the night of decree uh, uh, is better than a thousand months. It's better than a thousand months. And this thousand months is, some have looked at it as literally as thousand months and calculated 83 years and four months and this is how good it is. So if you prayed t- today, if you prayed Fajr, then you should take a vacation for 83 years and four months. It's not like that. Let's just get that out of the way. That's not what this means. Uh, the other thing you should know is that Allah Azza wa Jal, when He mentions time like a thousand, like a thousand years. al fasanatin. He adds sometimes bimma ta'uddun, from what you can count. In other words, I would almost imply here, it's better than a thousand months that you can imagine. And a thousand months is basically a lifetime. Eighty some years is basically a, an average person's lifetime. So Allah's way of saying, this is in your estimation, this night is better than an entire lifetime. Get, get, find this night and you found an entire good life for yourselves. Subhanallah. 
Here we were thinking about the decisions that are going to go from this year to the next year. And Allah Azza wa says, yes, even though those decisions are there, this night is so noble and so grand and so powerful, this can set the course of the rest of your life. It can actually change everything about your life. Laylatul Qadri Khairun Min Al-Fishahr. It's not just that every prayer you make counts a thousand, like you prayed for a thousand months, and that's true. Every dhikr you do counts like you did it for a thousand months. It's not just that. That, that would be amazing enough. But the, the, the larger implication here is this is better than an entire lifetime. Laylatul Qadri Khairun Min Al-Fishahr. So we have to like genuinely seek this night in order to transform ourselves and have hope in the rest of our lives becoming completely blessed by Allah Azza wa Jal. So he, this is the first value he gave. By the way, Qadr in Arabic also means value. Qadr in the, so it's a night of value. And so Laylatul Qadri Khairun Min Alfi Shahar is the first answer to the question, what is the value? It's, if it's the night of value, what is its value? Well, its value is more than a thousand months. By the way, remember the word more, Khairun Min, it's better than. He didn't say how much better than. Is it a thousand times better than a thousand months? Is it a million times better than a thousand months? He didn't qualify, he just said it's better than a thousand months. Which means a thousand months is just what we can imagine, but this is far beyond that too. Because if it was, you know, Lil Qadr is mithlu al shahr, it's like a thousand months. That would have been something. This is better than a thousand months. So now, the next item. One meaning of Qadr was value, and that's kind of answered by the value of this being better than a thousand months. The next question is, we said decree, the commands of Allah that come for, for every issue. So the next ayah will actually deal with the other meaning of Qadr. That angels descend along with Ar-Ruh, the spirit, what the Bible calls the Holy Spirit, what Quran calls Ar-Ruh, which means Jibreel alayhi salam himself. So all the angels descend, and also Jibreel alayhi salam, special guest in the house. Actually, the original star of Revelation, the original, you know, of all the angels, the one that brought the Qur'an to begin with, himself celebrates the anniversary of the night of the Qur'an by coming down again himself. That's, just think about what just we're talking about here. And he's muta' thamma amin. Qur'an describes him as a, someone of having a huge following. Not only him, his original team that used to come with the legion of the Qur'an, all of them are now descending. In, in, into, this hev- into these heavens and into the earth. This is the same Jibreel alayhi salam who brought the book to Musa alayhi salam, to Isa alayhi salam, who, you know, ayyadanahu bi ruhi al-Qudus, the one who gave it to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, and he's in our company this night. And all of his, you know, all of his followers, and then all the other angels. So Allah says, you know, angels, you can think of them like different departments. The first heaven has its angels, the second has its angels, the third has its angels. Angels stationed for different tasks. Right? Allah will describe sometimes angels that guard us, other times angels that have the job of, of writing what we do, other times He'll describe angels that just go around the arsh and only do istighfar. There are angels doing different things. And tonight, all the angels have been taken off task and just sent down. Even the angel Jibreel alayhi salam from Inda Sidratil Muntaha, right by Sidratul Muntaha, where his maqam is, you know, where he's Amin, from there he descends and he's come down for this night. And so he says, in that night, all of them descend bi-idhni rabbihim by leave from their master. This is an important thing to understand. Angels have their own work to do. They have their own tasks. And Allah has given them freedom from whatever tasks they do, now to come do this, to come descend here. That's why bi-idhni rabbihim is important. Then he says, min kulli amr. By, by Allah's permission, they come with every kind of command, every kind of issue. And that means that if it's a health issue, a personal issue, a family issue, a war issue, a, you know, a spiritual issue, an emotional issue, a physical issue, a financial issue, it doesn't matter what kind of issue, Allah Azza wa Jal has de- decreed that they come to solve all kinds of issues and help people with all kinds of issues, de- declaring the qadr of Allah, declaring the decree of Allah in this night for those who seek it. So the angels are just all around us, hovering around us, they flooded our space, and they're ready to give what Allah has written for us, subhanAllah. This is tanazzalul malaikatu wa ruhu fiha bi idni rabbihim min kulli amrin. Now, we quickly get to the last ayah, and you know, as we get to this ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal will now give us another meaning of qadr. Qadr also means limit. Qad ja'ala Allahu li kulli shay'in qadra. Allah has put a limit on everything. So if you notice, the, the first answer was about the value of Laylatul Qadr. The second answer was about the decree of Laylatul Qadr. And the third answer, the third ayah on the subject is about the limit of Laylatul Qadr. Okay? And the limit meaning how long does it last? 
that's another meaning of Qadr. So beautifully, I don't even have to describe the organizational structure of the surah to you. Every one of its ayat after the question, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr, are telling you something unique about qadr. Each one of them a unique item about qadr. One of them, once again, about its value, better than a thousand months. One of them about its decree, because that's the meaning of qadr too. And one of them about its limit. And the one about its limit to me is the most fascinating one. Salamun hiya hatta matla al fajr. I'll start with what makes it most, most unique. Matla meaning the rise of fajr. Not the early, early break of fajr. The rise of fajr, sun's already coming out. The sky's already turned. In other words, Allah made this night, He's so merciful and so grand and so, so, so giving in this night that instead of the, you know how our fast ends when it's still dark? It's still kind of dark and it's just the second fajr comes in but not Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr continues until you start seeing light itself. He extended it and he extended its value until Matla al Fajr. So its, its, its limit is unlike any other night. He still counts the early morning part of this Fajr as part of the night. That's a unique gift of Laylatul Qadr that Allah Azza wa enhanced its, its duration for us. Of course, he used the word Salamun Hiya. This night, there's no peace like this night. Like there's no night that has the, the kind of peace that this night has. That's salamun hiya. Peace like no other in it. Peace like no other in it. Let's understand the word salam because that's actually a very heavy word in this entire surah. I mean, there are two words that in a sense dominate this surah, or two or three words. It's, uh, you know, there's qadr, there's khair. You, you see a key word in every ayah. The, the, the first couple of ayat is qadr. The second key word is khayr, khayru min alfi shahar. The third key word is amr, min kulli amr. And then the final word is salam. You know, and all of them have something to do with qadr in the end, at the end of the day. You know, the qadr itself, then of course betterment, and then the commandment of Allah, or the decree of Allah, and finally peace. Actually, salam tells you everything that happens in this night. None of it is for destruction. None of it is for punishment. None of it is for, you know, death. It's all for giving people peace, security, safety, calm, etc. Allah didn't say the night is peaceful. He said the night is peace itself. As if, as if to say, not only is this night peaceful, but actually if you can take advantage of this night, then you have found what itself? Peace itself for the rest of your life. You found ultimate peace. As if there's no such thing as, if you, you haven't experienced what peace means, if you haven't found this night. That's the kind of statement, this mubalagh statement that's being made about salamun, hiya hatta matla'il fajr.